I hear the reference to wet inks and dry inks. What determines wet or dry? Every ink I've come across has been liquid and very wet. Smiley face. Uh, could you give a brand level description of wet and dry inks? Okay, so I get asked this a lot. Wet and dry ink is very subjective. Um, there may be some scientific measurement you can use, like viscosity and stuff like that, but I have not, uh, I'm not a scientist. I've, I've lightly researched how to measure viscosity and stuff like that, and it's, it involves equipment and things like that that are not just for your average Joe. So um, it's something that's a little more complicated than what I've been able to handle so far, but uh, certainly if I could, if any of you out there have ever done any research on viscosity and that kind of stuff and you know the equipment, hit me up because I would be curious to find a more uh, objective way to measure wetness and dryness in ink. But anyway, it has to do with basically the flow of the ink. So I totally hear what you're saying and I get that it's kind of a joke. Um, yes, they're all ink, they're all liquid, they're all wet, right? But it's sort of like when you have wine and you have some wines that are considered dry wines, you know, it's just, it, it has to do with, you know, kind of a different property. Obviously it's all liquid, but um, typically when you're talking about flow, um, how wet it is. If it's wet, that means it's really kind of gushing out of it. And it's really subtle. It's not like you touch it to the paper and it just shoots out of the pen. Um, when you're writing with a wetter ink, it's usually a little more lubricated. So um, what it's gonna mean is your nib is gonna feel um, like it glides across the page a little bit more. It's gonna make your nib feel a little smoother. So not only, uh, there's a couple of different things going on there. You know. I'm trying to think of how to, let me, let me back up a hot second here. So um, you know, there's a couple different components when you're making ink. And uh, you know, you have basically water, dye, um, you have salt as a component of it as well. Um, and then you have biocides and other things like that. So, um, and then you have some kind of lubricant. Um, so those are kind of the main components of ink. There could be other various factors going on, but, and there's a lot of different parts to all of those, but that's kind of the main components. So what happens is um, you have your water, which is water, dye, which different dyes um, usually are drier than water. So if you have a lot of dye, usually you need to add lubricant to kind of keep it flowing through the pen still. Um, you can add more or less lubricant depending on how much you want the ink to flow through the pen. Um, and certain inks like the Noodler's Eel series, for example, um, have even additional added lubricants in it. Um, the reason Nathan designed them that way with Noodler's Ink is if you have a piston filling pen that you don't want to have to clean out very often, um, you can use one of these Eel series more lubricated inks and it will actually help to lubricate the barrel of the pen so that when you're operating the piston mechanism, it uh, means that it'll stay lubricated more than it would with a conventional ink. So there's certain inks like that, like Monteverde has that with their ITF technology as an added lubricant. Generally, Pilot Orochizuku is referred to as a very wet ink. Um, the uh, Noodlers, especially the Eel series, are generally very wet. Diatramentis doesn't advertise anything as being particularly wet, but a lot of their inks are very wet. Um, Diamine is a little bit all over the place, but a lot of their inks tend to lean a little bit on the wet side. Um, typically a lot of the boutique ink brands will air a little bit more on the wet side. So, um, but it is a very subjective thing. So um, it's hard to say like overall, okay, this brand is wet or dry or whatever, because a lot of it has to do actually with the dye component itself. And the different dyes have different levels of you know, flow and stuff like that, and then the lubricants that they use to counteract that. It all depends, and none of this is advertised, or none of this is like broken down into a component with a formula when they put the ink together. There's no, you know, ingredient list or with percentages or anything on any of the bottles of ink. So it's really kind of mysterious a little bit. And, and so that's where it leaves it up to interpretation. And then of course you have other factors like how wet does the pen flow, how absorbent is the paper to determine all these various things. But, but generally speaking, all else equal, same paper, same pen, same person writing, same pressure, same speed, everything else being equal. If you have a wet ink, it's going to flow out of the pen more generously and easily, e more easily. Um, and also the other thing it's going to do is if it has more lubricants in there, as you're writing with it, those lubricants are going to help to basically lubricate your nib on the page. So it's gonna feel like it glides a little bit more. So if you like to have a smoother, writing experience using a more lubricated and a wetter writing ink is going to feel smoother, all else being equal. 
um, you know, even with the same nib and everything. Um, part of that is because of that lubricant that's down on the page, and part of it too, I think, is a bit psychological, whereas if you are trying, if you mentally are wanting to get a really dark line on the page, um, you naturally, your brain will want to press harder on the pen. So if you're pressing harder on the pen, you're gonna feel more resistance. Whereas if the ink is just flowing out more naturally, you're not gonna feel the need to press down hard on the pen. And so it's going to have less pressure, so it's going to glide a little bit easier. So I think there's actually two factors going on. One is a little bit more psychological, and one is a little more physical. Um, really, it's all physical, it, it, it all matters. But And this is all like, this is super subtle stuff. Like this isn't things that you would even necessarily be able to look at with your naked eye and see like, oh yeah, that ink writes so much wetter. But it's kind of thing like, you actually have quite a bit of tactile sensation in your fingers, um, more than you would probably think. So when you're writing and you're feeling the feedback on the paper and you're writing, same everything with two different pens, you will definitely be able to feel a difference between some of the more extreme dry and extreme wet inks that are out there. And that's why having ink samples and being able to actually try stuff for yourself is really key to being able, being able to kind of determine which is like the ideal situation for you. Um, however, since you asked me, um, you know, could you give, well actually no, you didn't even ask me to try it out, but I thought why not use the opportunity to actually ink up. I think it was somebody else that commented on your question here that said, why don't you try inking up both pens, uh, you know, the same pen with two different inks and see if you can tell a difference. So I have done that. So I chose two inks um, that are kind of considered on the extreme ends. One of them, um, I just chose a sample because I didn't have a full bottle on hand easily, but this is a Pelican Violet. So this is Pelican 4001. This is their regular, not the Edelstein, but their regular series, which I think generally speaking, at least from my years of experience, I found the Pelican regular series of inks to be some of the drier inks that are out there. It's not really good, bad, or indifferent, but if you like, if you have a really wet writing pen and you want to tame it a little bit, or if you like pen with a little bit more feedback, a little less saturated uh, in color, then maybe you should consider the 4001 Pelican inks. Um, the other one that I have is on the other end, Aurora Black. There's a lot of inks that are really considered kind of wet, um, but Aurora Black is pretty universally known as being one of the wettest, gushingest, kind of blackest black inks that are out there. So I thought I would use both of those. Um, I ink them up in Lamy's. I'm realizing now that it's like, okay, I chose a Vista and an All Star. Technically, they're different pen models, but the guts are exactly the same. Same feed, same nib, everything. So if you can get over the fact that the pens look a little different, just understand that they are essentially the exact same pen. So I wanted to give you a little writing sample of both of them. So I have the Pelican Violet inked up in my uh, Vista, and I realize I can't easily write and show you, so I'm just gonna write out a little bit. So I have Pelican Violet. And the thing that I notice immediately, and I, I've just inked up and written a little bit with these pens so far, um, I have a fine nib in both of these because I thought that would be good because their fine nibs are, are pretty consistent and um, it would be uh, pretty easy to show you uh, any differences that are going on. I needed one that was wet enough so that I could show you any differences that are happening. Um, but the thing that I immediately notice is I feel like I'm having to write with more pressure. Um, so there's my Pelican Violet, uh, and I'll show you a closer up in a second, but uh, it's not a deeply saturated violet. You know, even when I put it down real here, and it's like, I just did that a couple seconds ago, but it's dry on the page already. So that is one advantage of having a drier ink, is you're gonna get um, less dry time. So it's gonna dry a lot quicker. And then if I go with my Aurora Black, which I'm now realizing I should have left more space <laughs> as I wrote it, but um, definitely writes a lot wetter, looks a lot more saturated. Part of that is just the color, but there's my difference with my Aurora Black, really sticks out a lot. So now I'll zoom in a little bit and try and show you a little more closer up what I've got going on. Ta-da, okay. Pelican Violet and Aurora Black. <coughs> so you can see the level of saturation is quite a bit different on these two inks, and part of that might just be the color and stuff like that. Um, but uh, if I can catch it in the light, in the, in the right light, um, especially when I lay it down real thick, oh gosh, can't catch it, it might be dry already. But if I, um, you know, if I were to take and just do a certain dry time on this, so I'm gonna use the, um, the Violet. Okay, I'll put it on there. That's wet, 
but you can see there you go. So it's, it's only a little bit wet right at the end there. So I'll wait maybe 10 seconds or so. But that's pretty much dry. I mean, it's boom. It doesn't really go anywhere. So that it's not putting down as much ink. So that's a, that is a drier writing ink. Now, if I do the black, okay, forgive my awkward angle here, but I'll try actually writing with it here so you see what's going on. So I'm just trying to writing a swath of ink. So I'll wait maybe 10 seconds or so. But if you can, if I can catch this one in the light too. Oh man, it's really hard to catch a glare. What if I wait maybe 10 seconds or so? Not able to catch that glare, how about that? A little bit more of a smear. Let me try writing it down. I'm not getting you as proper a demonstration as I thought I would. How do you like my ear there? Isn't that cool? Okay. I think I actually wrote with less pressure because of holding it. There we go. Okay. I gotta really see, even just trying to hold it up in the air and write with it, so if I hold it up there, you can still see it's still drying, it's still drying, it's still drying, it's still drying. Okay, so that is another byproduct of having a wetter writing ink, and then there you go. A little better smear going on there. So the first one, yeah, I just kind of ignored that. Let's pretend like that didn't happen. I was writing it vertically and not using much pressure at all, so that was part of it. But when I held both down on the table and wrote with it, it was more of a, a similar actual comparison. So that just gives you a slightly, um, slightly visual example. It is kind of tough to show it in this video form like this, but hopefully that gives you at least a little bit of idea what's going on. I think if you are to try this for yourself and to see you know, two inks that are a little more extreme on one end or the other, it'll feel a lot more different to you. I can't, I'm trying to like tell you how different it feels, but the, the amount of feedback that I get when I'm writing with the Pelican ink, it's, it's very different. And I feel like I'm, I'm naturally writing with a lot more pressure. I'm slowing down a little bit and it's just, uh, it's a very different experience than writing say with the Aurora Black. So. Um, you'll notice a similar kind of experience when you're changing, uh, you know, ink colors and stuff like that. Um, even among the same brand, sometimes you can get uh, different experiences like that, which is part of the fun and part of the frustration too, is that, uh, you know, it's not always an exactly consistent experience from one thing to the other, but that's the beauty of it. So um, the last thing that I kind of want to leave off with that is, um, you know, of course you can get samples and stuff like that. I highly recommend that to try it for yourself. But even just when you're in kind of research mode, of course you can listen to people like me, you can look at individual, um, you know, ink reviews that bloggers have done and stuff like that. That's that's never a bad way to go. Um, but if you want to get some quick comparisons, we actually have on goodlaypens.com um, a feature for people to rate the wetness of the ink. So um, you can look at reviews and see kind of what people have done. And sometimes it's just, you know, one person's opinion and you gotta take it with a grain of salt. But sometimes with some of the more popular inks, there's a bunch of people that have left a review of how wet an ink really is. And that can give you at least somewhat of an idea, even though it's a subjective thing, if enough people have kind of rated it and, and, and have assessed that it's a super wet ink or super dry ink, then um, you can at least have a little bit better idea. So that's another cool thing that you can check out. Sweet.